All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to share with you, actually, I've got nine top tips on how to raise your virtual presence because I don't know if you've noticed, but the world seems to have ended. And I think at least for the next eight weeks, 12 weeks, what do you think? We're all going nowhere, which means that we have to be present because business isn't going to stop. It's going to slow, but we still have to be present and we've got to do it online. And as far as I'm concerned, when you get down to a stage, and you know how often I do that, your work is about addressing the audience, engaging with them, making eye contact with them. None of that exists, of course, when you're speaking to a camera lens, but there are skills you can use to at least alter the way you come across on camera and try and elevate yourself so that you're coming close to making that same impact. Tip number one, and it's lighting. You're going to be in a conference call. You're going to be in a Zoom, a webinar of some sort. Do not at any point position you facing your computer with a window behind you or with any light source behind you at all. The more light behind you, the worse it actually looks because, of course, you're backlit. And if you're a photographer, you know that. By the way, point of interest, I'm going to give you a little, I'm using Zoom. Can you see my, my virtual background? It's this thing, this blue thing here, and you can sometimes see it doesn't work 100%. If I take it away, I'm just upstairs in the office. But I thought, you know, you've got to, you've got to try and look vaguely professional. So here comes the virtual background again. I know, what do you think? Virtual or office? Let me know in the chat. So tip one, make sure you've got plenty of light coming in on your face and no light at all behind you. The better lit you are, believe it or not, the more attention actually people will pay to you. It sounds crazy, but it, it kind of really works. Okay, so number two, right, think about what most people look like when they're on one of these conference calls or a virtual video of some sort. I've got a laptop here just to demonstrate it. Most people will have the laptop a bit lower than their eye line, right? Like I'm doing it right now. And so imagine this is you, you're looking down at the camera, you're looking down. So everyone that can see you, they see someone who's kind of lording it over them. I am the big guy. I'm the lord of the man. I'm over all of you lot. It's not a good look, right? So what do you do to fix that? Well, you have to raise the camera so that it's directly in line with your eyes. So right now with this camera, I've got it absolutely in line with my eyes, right? But the laptop and the computers that most of us use, typically they are not in line. So bring it up. How do you bring up a laptop of any sort? Well, I was looking around. Just, just find some old books, like unwanted books. Here, good example. I've got some uh, unsold copies of What's Up With Your Handshake and The Art of Business Seduction. <laughs> so we use books like that, put them underneath the laptop. Next thing you know, your eyes are perfectly aligned with the lens. Why does it matter? Because people make these very, very specific judgments about you based on how you look as well as how you sound. So camera level up to eye level. Next up, audio. I am using a professional Rode mic on top of my camera, which I've got plugged into the system. If you don't want to go for that sort of investment, that's fine, but find another external microphone, even if it's your headphones that you plug into your laptop. It makes you clearer to understand. And as we all know, very often with these virtual meetings, half the time we're not even looking, we're just listening. I suspect half of you right now on this call, I just need to admit one more person, sorry about that. Welcome, Alan. Sorry I didn't admit you. I thought this thing was auto-admitting. So audio is what we were talking about. Find a microphone, plug it in. Your audio sounds better. Your message is that much clearer. It is a key element. I would often just think of it this way. Sometimes people will listen to you without watching, but never will somebody watch without listening. So prioritize audio. Um, the other thing to bear in mind, if you're in your house, and you have a room that has no furniture, nothing soft, nothing to absorb the sound, is it can get really echoey. And if it's getting super echoey, people don't like that so much. And so the best thing to do with that is find a room with soft furnishings, with couches, curtains, anything that will absorb the echo. And instantly, you get a much smoother, cleaner sound. Next up on my list that I wrote and have stuck to the front of my camera, addressing the camera. Hello. So again, when you're in person, it's, it's so much more personal. You get that moment to look at someone's eyes, to listen to them, to, to be the human that we all are. Most people on a virtual meeting forget all of that and they go a bit monotonous and they're staring down at the laptop lid. They're busy doing something else. Find that moment to connect. Build the connection by looking at the camera as if it's a person.
And it's weird because you're going to be distracted by so many other things. And in fact, when I'm distracted by this Zoom right now, I'm actually going to explain it. I'm just looking at the people on the list, checking there's no new questions. Thank you, Alison, for the comment earlier. Very nice. But I'm back with you. But at least I explained why I was looking away. So eye contact, treating the camera like a person, leaning in, being friendly makes a big difference. Uh, tip number five. This is a tough one. I call it allow for lag. Now, very often, especially when the calls are global and international, you will, you'll notice that you'll start talking, somebody will interrupt, then you'll go, oh, sorry, you could go on. Then there's a long pause. Then there's another interruption. Here's what's happening. And you know this. There's a time lag. When you start talking, somebody's going to suddenly try and talk as well. Ignore them. I know it's, it's counterintuitive, right? Ignore them because guess what? There was a time lag. They weren't interrupting you. You're going. Now they can hear you in full flow. Just keep going. The more you get tripped up by other people interrupting, uh, the more disjointed the whole call becomes. It's very difficult to get your points across. I am looking at everyone here. I'm going to unmute you all soon. Okay, so that was tip number four. Sorry, tip number five. Keep talking. Don't worry about the time lag. Um, now, number six. This is important. I'm trying to keep this particular quick mini session to 20 minutes, no more. Why? Because brevity is everything. Even in a conference, you're standing on a stage, you on the stage are up against people's devices, the sum of all human knowledge in their phone, right? That is quite a thing to compete against. Now, how about multiplying that by 10? Because when you're talking on a virtual meeting like this, the, the, the notifications are coming in, there's so many other things to click on. There might be a new Jamie Oliver recipe. There might not. You want to see it. There's all these horrifying updates. We don't want to miss them. So you're competing. You're competing hard. So brevity is everything. Keep it short. If you think it's going to take you 10 minutes, do it in five. Promise you it will pay big dividends. Uh, we are basically elevated goldfish now. That's what I call it. Elevated goldfish. Next up, time. I share this actually with audiences when it comes to you're taking people's time off them. So you've got to give something back. So I split this into four. T-I-M-E, time. It stands for teach, inspire, motivate, and entertain. You taking notes? I hope so. So teach is tell them something they didn't know. I'm hoping that in my little list of tips, there's something here, even if it's one tip that you'll take away with you. Tell them something they didn't know, and I promise you, people love it. They can't remember everything anyway. No one can. So teach. I for inspire. Inspire is about telling people what the end product's going to be. So the end product of this is next time you're in a virtual meeting, you're giving a webinar, you're making a presentation online, your audience is going to be more attentive, they're going to remember what you've said, and they're probably going to come back for more, right? That's me inspiring you with the end product. It's about the destination not so much the journey. That's what I mean by I, inspire. And then you get to M, motivate. What I mean by motivate is give them one follow-up, one thing they should do. Out of all these top tips and ideas, here's the one thing I advise you to do. For example, I might say to you, set up your system so you know it works. At least do that so you're ready to go when the opportunity arises. That's my one takeaway, if nothing else. There's my M. So teach, inspire, M for motivate. And E, yes, it stands for entertain. I'm not saying be a comedian. We can't all be comedians. But entertain, what I mean by that word is be yourself. Be who you are. You should be the same person on camera as you are at dinner with your friends. If only we were allowed to go out for dinner with friends. What are we going to do? Thankfully, I love cooking. So this is going to be a pleasure for the first week. Then I don't. Please. I don't know. Uh, all right, so that's time. T-I-M-E, teach, inspire, motivate, entertain. We're getting towards the end, and then I'll open it up for any comments. Um, I think it's important when people have shared ideas with you that you, you recap what they've said. So let's say they've come up with an idea. Of, we should do a meeting like this every week, for example. You should say, I really liked Alison's message there that we should do the meeting every week. I'm completely in agreement. The reason that's important is a lot of time people will drop off. They will miss certain points. And I think you can take the lead by recapping, reinforcing, doing stuff along those lines. Let me just cancel incoming call. Michael, sorry if that was you. Uh, so extra recaps and reinforcement. And finally, your background. Now, let me just take my virtual background off again. Boom. There we go. Hold on. There we go. So this isn't great. 
I'll be honest, I think I prefer a bookshelf or something, but at least have your background decent. If there's kind of discarded underwear back there, you're probably giving out the wrong message. I'll end it there. Thank you all so much for joining in. If you liked it, please spread the word. I'm going to turn this video into basically a standalone video and I'll post it on LinkedIn and I'll put it on YouTube as well because, you know, helpful points. Uh, but as an experiment, I really appreciate you joining me and um, I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much.